Hey, what's going on guys? Jimmy here with One Road. I am still working on my 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. It's got the 5.3 liter V8 in it and it's not starting. So far, you've seen me replace the fuel filter, the mass airflow sensor, and also the upper intake manifold gaskets. I know it may seem super obvious to some of you guys, hey, it's the fuel pump, it's the fuel pump. I know guys, okay, I know. That's the first thing I thought of. The only thing that threw me off was the check engine light. The check engine light was talking about the mass airflow sensor. So why not start there? Once I did get that Harbor Freight fuel pressure tester, I I did notice that obviously there was zero fuel pressure and therefore that means the fuel pump is just not working at all. I can hear the fuel pump kick on when I turn the key the first time and it primes for three seconds, but it must just be so bad that there's absolutely no pressure being built up. Either way, I'm gonna change this fuel pump just to be safe. So today, I gotta change the fuel pump. <laughs> First order of business is to drop the tank. I do have the Suburban jacked up and it's on a jack stand. And underneath the vehicle, staring at the rear end, you can see the gas tank, which is here. And that sucker is long. There's only two straps that hold this tank in. You got one here and one on this end down here. Now, as bad as it sucks to be underneath a vehicle, if you can jack it up, put a jack stand, get that sucker in the air, it's not so bad. I am a little worried once I get this tank you know, dropped, where am I gonna be working from? Because I have the drive shaft right here, which I guess I could detach from the back and move it out of the way, but that's just kind of a hassle. Otherwise, I'm gonna be on the driver's side working trying to get my hands up in the top there. And so what you're looking at right here is the rear of the tank and this is the fill tube. And what I'm gonna have to do is take this tube off. I'm gonna try to take it off of the tank side. I'm also gonna take the smaller tube here off. I already got the small tube off of there. I just wanted to show you uh, I wrapped it up in duct tape because uh, I just didn't want the fumes, you know, flying around here while I'm under here working. So as soon as I put that duct tape on, the fumes went away. So that's a good thing. I also wanted to point out, um, I saw another guy on another video that I watched. He grabbed these, these uh, kind of pipe caps and I think he was saying the one and a half inch was uh, big enough and perfect for the large filler tube side and so I picked up a one and a half inch and a two inch just in case I'll take back what I don't use but uh, once I pull that filler tube off of there I'll just cap it off with this and that way we won't have any spilled fuel or fumes and there you can see the filler cap is removed and I do have a one and a half inch cap on there I did have to move the uh, hose clamp on that cap down further because the cap is a little too shallow for the a uh, little ridge on the filler tube there coming out of the tank. So the next step is going to be to remove these two straps and there's one here and one in the back. I got my gun, I'm going to try to cheat here, but uh, I do have a 5 8 uh, socket on there. It's a little too big so uh, I don't just don't feel like getting up and grabbing the right size. Hopefully I don't strip this thing out. Let's see if this comes off. Doesn't look like I'm stripping it and it is moving. My little uh, 12 volt Makita wasn't quite getting it, so I had to grab my ratchet and just start cranking. By the way, the correct size is 15 millimeter on these bolts. Look at the size of this bolt. The point I'm at now is I got the tank dropped pretty much um, about 50% of the way. I cannot figure out for the life of me what's hanging it up over here, except for the fact that possibly it's being hung up here, not allowing me to push it forward so that I could then take it out from kind of this area. I'm just working on getting this tank fully down uh, because I cannot get enough access to be able to take the pump out at this point. There is a large flat piece of metal that kind of is a protector that's on the side of the tank. I took that off just to allow for a little more access. Here you can see the uh, top of the pump. You can see the two electrical connections that I have. Now I just want to point out that this vehicle is the 5.3 with the flex fuel. I'm not sure if that means that I have a different pump than non-flex fuel, but uh, that is something that I wondered about. I know that this connection right here that's a square plug uh, may have been superseded by a flat four plug in which you then have to splice in a different connector here. But I'm gonna try to get 
uh, the pump that includes the square plug so that I don't have to do any splicing and I can just plug and play. I do have to say this square plug was incredibly difficult to get out, probably the hardest part of the whole process. So here's a close up of the plug and what you can see is right here, that is the little pressure point you're gonna push. It's gonna lift up on the clip and the plug slides right out. However, this little baby right here is why that was so hard. This thing slides right down in there to lock everything in place and you need to take this red piece out first and uh, the way I did it was by sliding a screwdriver up in here where my finger is and lifting up on this bottom piece here, the bottom clip. Once you lift up on that bottom clip, this red piece should slide up and out, then it's easy to just depress the pressure point on this plug and pull it off. Okay guys, so you can probably tell how dirty I am. Uh, I have my truck jacked up quite a bit, but it's right underneath the driver's side uh, front door. I don't think it's high enough because the problem I'm having is I can't get the tank fully down on the ground because it's hitting the rear axle. If I was able to jack up the rear axle, which I could, but I, I think I can just manage everything like this, get the pump out get the new one back in and all that good stuff. I also tried to remove the drive shaft. That was a fail, so I just put everything back together. At this point, I know exactly what pump I need based off of the two plugs on the top, so I'm gonna go order it, and hopefully it'll be here tomorrow or the next day, and I can put the new uh, pump back in. Well guys, it's been a few days, and uh, I finally received my Delphi uh, fuel pump in the mail. It is Delphi. I chose Delphi because Delphi is an OEM supplier. Uh, you know, like that mass airflow sensor, it's made by Delphi, so I would assume that they make a high quality product, at least one that I know is already being installed in my vehicle uh, from the manufacturer, from GM, so uh, I didn't, I mean, of course there's many different uh, brands that you can go, you know, choose from. You can get really, really cheap ones on eBay and stuff like that, but this was about $160 on Amazon. I felt like that was a pretty good price, especially being that uh, this thing in any you know major box store that you could walk into is going to be well over a hundred more dollars than that Just wanted to show you exactly how it comes in the box It's basically wrapped sort of in this paper to kind of give it some padding and uh, There's a little instruction sheet or booklet there and so yeah, this is the pump And the plugs are exactly like the ones that I'm going to be taking out from my old pump so um, there's no problem there and that that's also why I dropped the tank to check to make sure which plugs I needed and which fuel pump I needed for that matter before I went ahead and ordered one because I did see a lot of videos on YouTube where people you know would get a fuel pump and they'd go to take out their old one and they're like oh what do you know the, the plugs don't match so they would have to then splice in a an included usually included um, different plug connector and I did not want to do that so this is exactly like OEM it's very very simple unit uh, this big white housing that you see here uh, basically houses the pump which you can see and they do have if you can see down in this hole not sure if you can see down in that hole but there is uh, the, the sock or the filter that usually is down at the bottom is now internal here is the mechanism that uh, tells the uh, fuel gauge how much fuel is in the tank all in all it seems to be like a pretty well-made unit I mean I can't see anything that seems like it'd be low quality um, everything seems to be really nice. It obviously does come with a float, which you just press in very easily, and of course a new gasket for the top. To get any sort of sense of what I'm doing, <laughs> I have a mirror up here. I have a light here. I stuck a screwdriver in this area. Obviously the ring is now loose and turned, but my screwdriver was in here pulling this locator pin back, and that was the point I used to knock it loose also. So that way I could just kind of hold the screwdriver steady with my left hand and my right hand here. I, I pounded the uh, ring loose while at the same time pulling this pin back. My two fuel lines are in here. Everything is good to go. I'm gonna pull this ring off. Okay, ring is off there. Sorry about the terrible view here, guys. It's very uh, difficult 
with my limited stability to move in here to get any sort of good camera angle. I do have a mask on, which you could probably tell. I also have eye protection. How in the world is this coming out here? Oh, there we go. So there we go. Trying to be careful of any fuel that is still within the pump. All right, we got her out. Now we can take her out and compare to the uh, new one. Well, here is the old fuel pump. This is, I believe, the original unit to the car. You can see it is a Delco, so I'm guessing that's AC Delco. I'm, I'm assuming that's the whole pump and not just this plug. But if you take a look inside, this is uh, the original pump there. You can see the original teeth, the electronics there that give you your uh, fuel reading off of the float. Everything seems to be not bad. Um, there's the original filter there. When the pump fails, the pump fails. And uh, it's time for a new one. You can see all the plugs are the same. There is on these uh, pumps a locator tab and as you can see, even though the, the electrical plugs may not be exactly right in terms of direction pointing, the fuel lines actually are. So uh, it's going to be much easier to get those electrical lines pulled over and plugged in than it would be to have to crank the fuel lines um, if these weren't pointing in the same direction. But they are, so I think we're going to be just fine. All right, now comes the, uh, the fun part here. And that is trying to get this thing in there. Uh, there we go. Wow, that wasn't hard at all. Thank you, Lord. As you all probably know, and if you don't, the tank or the uh, pump actually sits in the bottom of the tank. Okay, I can see in my little mirror system I have set up just where uh, this is supposed to go in terms of the, the tab. But if I just press this thing down, are we, are we in the money? That's my question. When does it stay down? Okay, wow, that, that seems like it's it. Figure out how in the world I'm going to do this with one hand. Because now I can't see my locator tab. You are looking at an installed pump. Everything is good. Uh, you, you have to kind of hammer it from every different location to hammer it uh, with a you know a screwdriver and a hammer and all those little squared off tabs um, righty tighty of course and I don't know if you can see on the back here hopefully you can see that tab there that has to basically be located in in that spot and once you get that far then you're done I just went to the gas station, I filled up my gas jug, two gallon gas jug, put it in the tank. So I think we have probably around three and a half gallons in there or so. I was estimating about a gallon and a half when I, uh, I actually shoved my phone down in the gas tank and, uh, and was looking at it. But um, I think there was probably a gallon and a half in there at the time. What I'm going to do is prime this thing and try to start it. I'm not even going to check for fuel pressure because I'm just assuming that if it starts, the fuel pressure is there. So I'm gonna try to prime this thing, I think three or four different times. And uh, first of all, we'll, we're gonna hear if the fuel pump kicks on. 
Um, but after that, we'll see if it starts. All right, guys, so here we go. Key in for the first time. And, uh, oh, I just heard the fuel pump. I'll turn it off again. Okay, wow. I can hear the fuel pump kick on pretty good, and I've never heard it that loud before. Okay, I'm gonna, let's point the camera over here so maybe you can hear it. Do you guys hear that? The fuel pump is kicking on. I'm gonna do it again. I know you can hear that, but that, my old fuel pump did not prime like that. It didn't prime that loud, and it didn't prime that hard. It sounds like it's priming pretty good. Do it again. Look at that. Wow, I just heard my wife scream. This thing's been dead in the driveway, guys, for a long time. Holy moly. Wow, thank you, Lord, yes! That feels so good, doesn't it? I mean, are you guys there with me? I mean, this feels amazing. Wow, I did fix a lot of stuff. And I still need to see if I have a vacuum leak and all that stuff. Um, but holy smokes. I think I gotta drive this thing for a little bit too for the computer to be able to kind of re-figure things out. Uh, because if there was a vacuum leak that's now sealed, that's one issue that's taken care of. Uh, and also the fuel pressure is now probably a heck of a lot higher than it was before, so it's, it's probably got to, I'm sure it's doing it now, but um, I'm gonna turn this off before I suffocate myself. Goodness, oh man, that feels good. That feels amazing, guys, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna go take this to Costco, fill it up with gas, and hopefully we'll be driving it trouble-free here for the next, hopefully, a long time. Wow, I'm, I'm so stoked right now. All right, guys, uh, well, hey, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel if you're not. I have lots of videos, car videos, truck videos, I should say. Um, and uh, yeah, so thanks for coming along this ride, these multiple videos where I try to figure out what the heck was wrong with my car. I know a lot of you probably knew right in the beginning, hey, check the fuel pressure, it's probably a fuel pump. And you know, I have to say, I was thrown off by the check engine light that came on that said it was the... Uh, mass airflow sensor, so I kind of started there. But uh, hey, we got it fixed, it's all good in the end. We made a bunch of cool videos, I fixed a bunch of things, and uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. But uh, I will see you in the next one, guys. Don't forget to check the description below this video for any links to products I may have used. And uh, all right, guys, peace out.